few leeks. Leeks are in the onion and garlic family. Uh, they often look big and bulky, and I think a lot of people may not know what to do with them. But they're actually really easy to use, and they add just a little bit of a different flavor in an onion. So sometimes I'll use it in place of an onion, and sometimes I'll use it in addition to the onion. It's really easy to cut. You're just going to take the heads off, and you're pretty much going to use just this part of it. So we cut down here. So again, I'm just going to slice this pretty thick. The leeks make a great addition to any stir-fry or any soup uh, because of their unique shape. These will all break apart inside the stew. They'll be quite wonderful. Uh, leeks are, have been known to lower cholesterol, uh, help in the fight against cancer, and of course help the overall immune system. They're rich in vitamin B's and C's, um, manganese and iron. It's a great source of a dietary fiber as well. So, getting together quite a colorful stew here. I'm going to dice a few tomatoes and then I'm going to add a can of chopped tomatoes. To buy organic, I find that it tastes so much better. Uh, but if you're not going to buy organic, really make sure you look for a vibrant red color. You want to make sure it's really rich in nutrients. Um, that's going to increase the flavor. A great tip about caring for tomatoes, I don't put them in the refrigerator. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean they will perish faster, it depends on the weather in your kitchen. When you refrigerate it, it gets a little mealy on the inside, so it doesn't taste quite as nice. Uh, actually, it will have more of a nutrient content, too, if it's left at room temperature. You want to use a serrated edge when you cut a tomato. Uh, the reason is you're not going to have any kind of squish or breakage, especially if your tomato is really ripe. So, I'm going to go large pieces again with my tomato. Tomato's got a lot of great nutrients to it. It's really rich in vitamin C. All those orange, red fruits and vegetables are really high in vitamin C. It also has uh, a number of carotenes in it. The most popular is lycopene. And that's been uh, known in the fight against reducing your risk of cancer, especially prostate and breast cancer. They did a study and they found that men that ate one serving of tomatoes reduced their risk of prostate cancer by 20%. All right, so we're just going to dice these up really nice. And we're going to add them to the pot. I like to add tomatoes last. If I'm doing a stir fry, I put them in at the very last second. But the reason I'm going to put them in the last here is because I don't want any pressure laid on the tomato in the beginning of the cooking. Um, they're fairly fragile. So I'm going to put them right on top here. And we're just about done. We're going to add um, a bay leaf just for a little bit of added flavor. I use my fresh ground pepper. Pretty generous with that. And my pink Himalayan sea salt. Remember that our pink Himalayan sea salt is going to help with alkalinity in your food. Uh, it's going to help bring a lot of minerals to it, and it really does bring out the flavor to your food. You'd be really surprised that you really do need to cook with such few ingredients. You have a great deal of alkaline foods over your acidic foods. So what we're talking about here is that the meat, which is acidic, needs to be neutralized by a plentiful amount of fruits and vegetables. Um, I'm going to put my tomatoes in there. Organic, near Glen. Uh, I like using them. They don't have any lead in their cans. Uh, tomatoes will leach from the cans, so we want to make sure we're lead free for doing a can. Really inexpensive, no additives. You can find it on sale too. The last spice I'm going to put in is just a little bit of oregano. I like a little bit of an Italian flavor to this. Okay. We're pretty much ready to go here with this. That's your stew. And one last thing about cooking gluten-free. You can still use a lot of your traditional um, recipes like this one. It just changes what you serve it on. Now certainly you can go to a rice pasta and keep it very traditional, but try thinking about serving this over mashed potatoes, uh, serving it over rice. Depends on what time of the year. If you're in early fall, uh, then maybe rice for a lighter meal. Uh, if you're in the part of winter, then maybe the mashed potatoes. Okay, so we're looking at our veal oso buco finished. See how lovely, nice and piping hot, beautiful assortment of color and vegetables, nutrients, and the veal. 
We're going to serve it with a brown rice. Normally I would put the brown rice in first and then serve the food over the top. Remember this is great with mashed potatoes. You can also do red lentils and serve it over the top of that. Or you can serve it over our rice pasta if you're doing gluten free. So there we go, there's our finished product. I would serve this with a salad. I'm a big believer in raw with every meal. By this style of cooking, we, get, we don't lose any of the nutrients in a cooking water or we don't um, saute it into the air. All of it from the vegetables gets pulled into the sauce. When we cook with high quality meat with the bone, we're gonna get some great nutrients that are in the marrow and we're slow cooking that out. So it really has a lot of benefits. It's not just about the, a quick meal at the start of your day so that it's ready by the end of the day. Well, enjoy. This is Laura Kopeck, nutritionist, wishing you good health.